Welcome to Malmesbury Tech, my name is Mr Hutchings and today we're going to be looking at the basis of brazing two pieces of steel together. Um, firstly, I want to take you through our equipment and this is the equipment we have at Malmesbury School and this orange unit is our brazing hearth and for today we're going to be using the right hand side. Now, the two pieces we are going to join, um, I've prepared them in advance, we have a piece of 6mm steel rod with a small V-cut filed in. The six millimeter steel rod has the V-cut put in it to allow the three millimeter rod just to sit there. Now we're gonna braise these together because within schools that works at a much lower temperature than welding. And the main thing to remember about this, it is not welding. Welding is a very, very different process. In welding, we would get the temperature to its melting point with the steel that's just over 1400 degrees. With the brazing, we're gonna be less than a thousand, so the steel will not melt. So the welding will melt the two surfaces, the liquid metal would then mix together, solidify and set as one solid lump. With the brazing, our two components don't change, and what we end up doing is melting another metal to wrap around it, and in a particular way, almost glue them together with this other metal. We have our brazing half here, and I want to talk a little bit about the operation of it and especially the safety, because this process is a little bit more than your normal workshop experience. Firstly, the brazing half will work with natural gas. Now, there are lots of um, emergency stop buttons with this, which will touch, turn the gas straight off if needed. And we've got this split into three areas. We've got a little storage and safety area over this side which we're not going to deal with today. Our middle section is a mini forge and we will use that to light our brazing torch from and when I switch the whole system on we'll see how that operates. But our main area is on the right and here we have a series of fire bricks. These bricks are specialist bricks which do not disintegrate with heat and will take the temperatures that we need with it. And it's set up into the curve to trap the flames and keep the heat within the two pieces of steel as we go. One of the safety features we have is the extraction system and comes out through the top, taking out any excess smoke, fumes, gas, or any other bits and pieces which are nasty and removes from the immediate area. In order to light the brazing torch, we need to have a pilot light. And on this particular system, the first thing we need to do is to put power to the brazing hearth with our switch on the side, and then our little control on the front which says blower, and we'll produce a small, constantly running flame above our hearth. So I'm gonna click the blower switch on. The brazing torch is the part that we get our flame from and it's stored in our tube on the side and if I remove it, we can see we have two pipes running to it. The red one contains natural gas and the blue one is compressed air. And the way of describing what this is like, it is like a Bunsen burner on steroids. We are gonna get a large yellow flame if we just burn the gas and as soon as we bring the air into it, we'll go into the blue flame that most people understand from science lessons, except this one is a little bit more powerful. Now, it's really, really important that it's lit in the correct order and also that it is turned off in the correct order. And that prevents a lot of excess flames or smoke or soot around the room. What I will do is I'll rest the nozzle of the torch on our cage and that then stops it moving around as we light the flame. In lighting it, we must turn on the gas first, so we'll end up with the yellow flame, and then slowly bring the air in. So to start with, I'm going to turn on the blower, the pilot light, as I did before. So we have the pilot light showing, I'm going to bring the torch in, nozzle is resting, and I will turn on the red gas, so we get our yellow flame. Just to give a demonstration of bringing the air into this, I'll bring the air in and we can see that the yellow flame turns to a blue. I'm switching off. We turn the gas off first and that means that all we have coming out is the compressed air. And then we turn the blue air one off second. Okay. 
gas has been switched on and now the air is on and now I'm heating at the hot spot of the flame and a little bit later I will demonstrate what happens when you don't have the hot spot of the flame on the two pieces of metal. You'll notice that I'm now moving the flame around to heat the pieces of metal. As this is the first one of the day, the bricks are still cold and they are therefore removing most of the heat. In my hand I have the brazing rod and that is the extra metal I'll be melting. It is a brass alloy. The end of the brazing rod is heated and then dipped into the powdered flux, the pink powder in the tin. The end of the brazing rod is heated to allow the flux to stick to it. The flux aids with the flow of the liquid braze rod and also slightly etches the surface of the metals to make them clean. The top rod, being only three millimeters in diameter, heats up much quicker than the larger six millimeter brazing rod. Therefore, we need to make sure that we get both pieces of metal to the same temperature to allow the brazing rod to flow and join to both parts. Otherwise, the brazing rod will just fix to the hotter part and the join will not be made. We are looking for a temperature in the region of 850 to 900 degrees centigrade. And we can tell that by the color the steel has gone to. As it heats, it changes color through a series of purples and blues, reds, and through to the oranges. And on the chart, we can work out exactly the temperature that piece of metal is at. When both pieces are at the right temperature, the end of the brazing rod is placed on the join. The flux melts away. The brazing rod melts, flows around the join. And when you're happy that the join is correct, the flame is turned off, the brazing rod solidifies and the join is made. The gas torch is put back into the tube for safety and to cool the piece of metal, we take it with a pair of tongs and we quench it in a bath of cold water. If the join has not worked, we can reheat it, the brazed rod will remelt and we can separate the two parts of the steel. We will then need to clean them up probably by filing or with an emery cloth, and then we can rejoin.